Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to the Epstein Project podcast. Uh, Today is Sunday, May 22nd. It's approximately 1130 uh, a.m. I want you to know that I recorded this whole podcast and it never downloaded, so I'm redoing it. Um, Before I get started, I want to thank everyone who uh, came to my rescue and to... um, I mean, you guys are just amazing who helped me find information, who donated to my cause, to my legal fund, Uh, the outpouring of love and support has been, I I don't even have words just to describe um, my gratitude to you. Um, And um, so, you know, the word thank you is, is, uh, I, I, you know, bold. (laughs) capped exclamation mark um so you know it's it's been a a humbling experience and um and i i just want to thank you Uh, i want to thank you uh so in any event um there's a lot of information that i want to share with you regarding uh the attorneys that have been uh handling uh the majority of the cases for the victims of Jeffrey Epstein uh, that I came across. You see, I always think there's a silver lining in everything. And I and, and uh, this is another way that sort of uh, has shown me that yes, even in my worst moments, there's gold to be found. And one of those is the um, learning that Stanley Pottinger is a CIA agent and <laughs> and I will explain how all of that came to be um, shortly. Before I get started, please like the video, like the video now because you'll forget to like it later and subscribe uh, because I no longer uh, have the ability to send you an email. And also if you want to support my work, you can do that on Patreon. Um, I keep uploading all sorts of goodies there that, you know, there's like close to 200 things you can, uh, I mean, like really important things that are all connected to espionage and to different cases that the public never really gets to hear and or join my newsletter, the Epstein Project newsletter, which is where I break all my stories. Um, There's a lot of stuff that I can't share on Twitter or even on my podcast. And and that's the stuff that I share (laughs) to my newsletter. So Epstein Project newsletter. Um, Okay, so we're gonna get started here. Um, In January, I had to send a cease and desist letter to David Boys in order to get uh, Maria Farmer to stop defaming me. I'm not the only person she's defamed. Uh, Her recent addition to a long list and primarily females uh, is Whitney Webb. uh, And all of you are probably aware of what's going on. But any in any event, you know, as far as what the attacks on me, I, I wanted them to stop to that end. I wrote a cease and desist letter to David Boys. I copied Brad Edwards and I copied Virginia Giffray. Within days, uh, while I did not hear back from uh, any of those three people, uh, Maria Farmer's artistic blower Twitter account was gone. Through the grapevine, uh, someone who speaks with Maria Farmer told me that she told him that it was David Boyes who actually went in there and removed it. Uh, And removed it, uh, I can only speculate because every other tweet, if not every tweet going back to when she began tweeting in April of 2020, yeah, April of 2020, was one defamatory comment after another against many people. So she was um, subjecting herself to many lawsuits, not just from me, but many other people. So it was taken down. And I guess David Boyes did not think that she would continue to do so on podcasts. So what I was told during this past week 
or maybe two weeks that I have had to uh, gather information uh, to present to an attorney so that I can proceed with my case against her. Um, and basically, I just want her to stop the harassment and stop the defamation. I'm not looking to sue her for millions of dollars. I just want my life back and my peace of mind back and, and you know, to be left alone from someone who was clearly having issues that should be taken care of by um, professionals. In any event, um, I discovered that after uh, boys took down her uh, Twitter account that she began inviting herself, reaching out to people who have podcasts and getting on them and apparently uh, began to defame me and other people libel me, slander me, whatever it's called on these shows. So, you know, I started getting transcripts of what she was saying. Well, one of these things that she was saying also included the fact that she started dating Stanley Pottinger. Oh my God, if that wasn't good enough to hear, and because like it's wrong on so many levels, Stanley Pottinger is now about 81, 82 Stanley Pottinger is also Bradley Edwards' uh, associate. They formed a law firm together. Um, and I'm going to take a moment to explain how that happened soon. But in addition to uh, Maria saying that she, quote, dated Pottinger, she um, went on to say that he used to like to drink. And when he drank, he talked too much. And that, you know, he talked about Gloria Steinem. And it's a well-known fact that Pottinger dated Gloria Steinem, the CIA asset, uh, for a decade. Uh, there are photos of them online, although a lot is being scrubbed as I speak. Um, and that he, according to her, told her that he was CIA also. Now, wow, that is a major discovery. I knew the Epstein case was being handled. I think all of us had a sense that something was wrong. But, um, and remember Epstein always uh, boasted to people that he was CIA. And the one thing I wanna make very clear to you is that, and, and this is something I've heard from some of the people that I speak to occasionally who are following this case, people say, well, you know, Epstein lied, he bragged. I'm gonna say something to you. I've been studying um, spies and intelligence networks and the way a, a spy projects himself is he's a master of uh, deception. So he's going to lie some of the times, he's gonna tell the truth other times. And so the fact that Epstein actually fits the mold is even further proof for me as somebody who has taken this up as a, a, an area of study uh, than it is to dispel it. So yeah, do I believe still Alex Acosta when he said, I was told to back off that he Epstein belonged to intelligence 100%. And, and then to see that Pottinger is a CIA asset or agent, I would think in his case, he's more of an agent than an asset. Um, and that not only was he connected to Gloria Steinem who subverted for the CIA, the organic women's movement of the 1960s and the 1970s, all of the money that came in to uh, give her a platform came from the CIA. Uh, the CIA also funded her Ms. Magazine. Um, and this is information that I believe there's a um, on my Patreon, I uploaded uh, a video uh, where the information about Gloria Steinem is discussed. Well, it's interesting because Steinem not only dated Pottinger for a good 10 years, she also dated Anton LaVey. And those of you who are following 
all of these cases of uh, international child trafficking know that Anton LaVey was connected to the intelligence, to military, to all of these. It's the Franklin scandal. It, it, so it's, it's, you can see all the connections. And um, so for her to say, for Maria Farmer to say that Pottinger is a CIA and told her he was CIA is important. I want to remind you that David Boies uh, represented Harvey Weinstein and that uh, through his friend, Prime Minister Ahut Barak, he got for his friend and client, Weinstein, and he meaning David Boies, the firm, Israeli-based firm, Black Cube, that is staffed by former Mossad agents. Their task, he, he signed the contract and he got into a lot of hot trouble for that and received backlash. Um, he signed the contract to hire Black Cube for Harvey Weinstein, who's, uh, who was then basically these former Mossad agents were tasked to infiltrate the life of Rose McGowan, Rosanna Arquette, Ronan Farrow, to stop the media from following certain stories, to harass them, to do whatever it took. And, you know, like it, Ronan Farrow in his book writes that at one point he was so frazzled and he moved, he was terrified for his life. He moved, he broke down crying and while well, in a cab. I mean, the whole thing is a nightmare. Um, if you've never been stalked, I mean, I've been stalked. It's a terrifying thing to be stalked uh, because y you're, you don't know if the next person you talk to is your friend or your foe. And so um, they were in this predicament and they continue to be in this predicament, quite frankly. So uh, we have the element of Black Cube, which is connected to Mossad. We have the element of the CIA, which is, I mean, so just as a reminder, uh, the Iran-Contra affair, as it's known, uh, was a collaborative effort between the CIA and Israel's Mossad. And if you don't know that, know that. Uh, and frankly, if you wanna know more about that, read my latest book, Creating Epstein, Bill Barr, Leslie Wexner, and the CIA. It's available only on my website, kirbysummers.com, and you will be brought up to date on that. Um, so uh, I, I was also struck by the um, by several things that I want to mention. I don't want to make this too long, but I do want to make certain facts known. We're talking about predation, uh, you know. So somebody like Harvey Weinstein is a very very bad sexual predator. Uh, her, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Glenn Maxwell, same with the added element that it's an international trafficking blackmail spy ring, right? Um, however, the, the undercurrent is that um, people are lured, lied to promise things, um, kind of like psyoped into falling for a trap or, you know, becoming the, uh, the, the victim, I'm gonna use that word lightly here, and so it's interesting to see that Pottinger, who in Bradley Edwards' book went to Kentucky in 2016 with Bradley Edwards to talk to Maria Farmer, would take that as an opportunity to seduce her. Uh, I think that's called predation. Like, quite frankly, that's just so, such a creepy thing. Uh, he's now about 81, 82. She was born in 1969. So roughly that's about 30 years difference. Uh, she claims that it went bad, but to be honest, based on the information that we've seen, all of her relationships with everyone go bad. So that's not surprising, but she did say, and she said it more than once, that he told her because he used to drink a lot according to her that you know sort of he too is cia so that's an important thing and, and it's a very 
big thing to know that the um, Epstein case is being controlled. We all knew this, right? We all knew this, uh, but now there's like this new twist and surely I, I didn't, I'm not holding my breath. I don't think mainstream media is going to run with this at any point in time. Um, the other thing that I did was I started to go case by case and look at all of the cases uh, that were filed by the David Boys, uh, Stanley Pottinger, and Edwards team. And all of them, all of them were settled. Not one made it into a courtroom. And frankly, none of the language includes the names of any of the uh, predatory, high profile politicians and or very important businessmen because you can't have a trafficking ring without men. And in fact, there's some women too, high profile women that these victims were trafficked to. In these lawsuits, instead of naming the uh, person that a victim has outed, that this group of attorneys who theoretically are supposed to be working for the victims of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, write a former so-and-so, uh, former high official of the United States. I mean, you know, some of those were very clear to see that they were talking about former President Bill Clinton, about other people, you know, that, that it's like, wow, okay. Um, so they're not even naming them in the lawsuit. and. Let, I'm going to go back to Maria Farmer's lawsuit. So Maria Farmer made a statement that she didn't want, quote, their dirty money. When frankly, that's really all she wanted, because not only was she, did she write this tweet, but immediately upon writing this tweet, I think either before, she had already filed a lawsuit. The reason I'm bringing this up is because her attorney, David Boys and Pottinger, obviously, <laughs> who she worked for, but that's a story for another day. He built this fake company to maybe funnel money her way. Who knows what they were doing, but they were doing something that was not on the up and up. How not surprising. Um, however, uh, the lawsuit that was filed on behalf of Maria was simply so that she can get money from the estate. So it's like, in order to get money from the estate, apparently you had to file a lawsuit. So they did that and they seem to have done that for more than one person and then immediately settled with the estate. So all of this, if we go back, uh, what, a year or two to the Kessler situation who Pottinger and David Boyce decided to label a hoax, this really pisses me off. I urge you to pull up the New York Times article uh, about Kessler because I am beginning to think that it was not a hoax. Uh, it's called Jeffrey Epstein Blackmail in a Lucrative Hot List. And it talks about um, a man that uh, sort of connected with um, Pottinger and boys. Uh, he had some information. In fact, he had tapes that theoretically belonged to Jeffrey Epstein. And um, he, in the story, according to the New York Times, um, and by the way, the Times goes ahead to back uh, Boys and Pottinger, but not before they sink themselves because um, even the so-called deep throat of the Epstein case was concerned that these attorneys were not interested in helping the victims, but they were more interested in settling these cases and in then sort of changing from representing the victims to representing the um, their perpetrators. So that uh, is an unethical thing. Uh, 
the whole thing is just um it's kind of disgusting you know so that not only i think have the victims been in many ways misled about who these people are and what their interest is um but we have and you know none of us wants to be made to feel foolish so for example maria farmer was never raped uh she made that very clear on whitney webb's uh show which she just recently had her remove uh that three-hour interview they did in 2020 she also told me when she reached out to me for help, uh, she wanted me to write the um, petition, which I did and required a couple of conversations. But she told me, no, we were lucky. Me and Annie were lucky. We were able to get away. So Annie Farmer has been touted uh, all over mainstream media and got $1.5 million, as did their younger sister, Ashley, who never met Epstein. Now, I'm sorry, there's something wrong when mainstream media makes people believe that these women were true victims. Maria Farmer has recently, and it's just, it's very upsetting in some of the new podcasts that she's giving, she's using the term rape. Well, she was not raped. It's in legal documents. I uploaded uh, the actual lawsuit that uh, David Boyes uh, created for her in order for her to get a settlement. Uh, and, and frankly, her settlement, she told me, was $8,000 because, quote, nothing happened to her. Annie Farmer, who was not raped, she was cuddled, and um, Ghislaine Maxwell rubbed her upper chest. She got 1.5 million. I don't know how much the younger sister who never even met Epstein got, but there's something wrong when most of you or most people following this case around the world believe that, that they were true victims in the sense that they were raped. I'm a woman who was raped, brutally raped, which began a series of terrible things in my life. So for me to hear somebody um, call themselves a victim who is not a victim, it's very upsetting to me. And, and therefore I'm very passionate about uh, bringing this to light. Equally passionate to explain and explore the role of David Boyes and Pottinger. Um, nothing is as it seems in the Jeffrey Epstein case. Um, Clearly, we're not being told exactly what's going on. Um, the fact that not one of these lawsuits has made it into a court of law. So for example, I'm gonna give you two examples and then I'm gonna wrap up. The first example being that um, in 2015, Virginia Dufre uh, sued uh, Ghislaine Maxwell for defamation. Uh, there was, some discovery that happened, there were some depositions, and then the case was scheduled to commence in 2017. Uh, Bradley Edwards was in Florida, the case was going to commence, and David Boyd said, don't worry, I've got everything under control. This is in his book, Bradley Edwards' book, A Relentless Pursuit, My Fight for the Epstein, I'm sorry, My Fight for the Victims of Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, well, the day that the court was open, that everything was supposed to start, David Boyes settles with Glenn Maxwell. While researching David Boyes' style, I discovered that he's the boss, literally. He is the boss. He decides what is best for his client. Well, that's not the way it typically works. You hire an attorney for his legalese and for his ability to do things in the legal on the legal um, in the legal venues that are appropriate. But you're the client, and you are supposed to tell your attorney if you want to settle, if you don't want to settle, if you want to move forward. 
and that attorney has to uh, listen to you. And in, in, in David Boyce's case, he makes it very clear that he's the one that makes the decision. And so it appears that um, he made the decision to settle with Glenn Maxwell. That would have gone to uh, court. We would have gotten more information. Same thing happened with the Prince Andrew situation. Virginia Giuffre made a public statement. She said she didn't want the money. She wanted uh, to be vindicated and she wanted to go to court. She wanted it to be heard by a jury. That didn't happen, did it? Well, I guess now we know why. Uh, David Boyce has been handling this with his friend uh, Pottinger, who by the way, Bradley Edwards says in his book uh, that uh, Pottinger is Boyce's private 007. So, hey, if we needed confirmation that uh, he's a CIA agent, I think we have it from Bradley Edwards. Uh, in any event, there'll be more to come. I've got, I want to be able to explain to you how the Glenn Maxwell case was also um, handled and how nothing is the way it was presented. And there's more about this situation that's been uh, breaking, frankly, during the last couple of days uh, through my research and sharing it with you guys and then you guys sharing things with me and I, I really what a great team we've become uh we, we're doing what uh mainstream can't do and what most people can't do we're basically <laughs> exposing all of the hidden nooks and crannies uh and all of the lies uh that were being fed to us by not just mainstream media but by sadly what appears to be uh, the people in charge of protecting the victims. Okay, so for um, this Sunday, May 22nd, it's Kirby Summers for the Epstein Project podcast. Like the video, have a good day. Bye-bye.